Lyman, means, magic. Solomon neither disbelieved nor did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sin, magic with the two angels. However, the devils, disbelieved and taught magic to the people in the, Babylon of Herod and Merit, meaning Gabriel and, Michael, for Jewish sorcerers claimed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent magic by the words of Gabriel and Michael to, Solomon, son of David. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala denied this false claim and stated to his, Prophet Muhammad that Gabriel and Michael, were not sent with magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also exonerated Solomon from practicing, magic, which the devils taught to the people of, Babylon by the hands of two men, Herod and, Merit. Hence, Herod and Merit were two ordinary, men, not angels or Gabriel or Michael. 281 These were the words of Itabari, and this, explanation is not plausible. Many among the Salaf, said that, Herod and Merit were angels who came down, from heaven to earth and did what they did as, the, Ayah stated. To conform this opinion with the fact that the angels are immune from error, we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had eternal knowledge what these angels would do, just as he had eternal knowledge that Iblis would do as he did, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to him, being among the angels. And, remember, when we said, to the angels, prostrate yourselves before, Adam. And they prostrated except Iblis, Satan, he refused, 2116, and so forth. However, what Herod and Merit did was less evil, than what Iblis, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse him, did. Al Qurtubi reported this opinion from Ali, Ibn Masud, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Umar, Kab al Abar, Es Sadi, and Al Kalbi. Learning magic is Kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. But neither of these two, angels, taught anyone, such, things, till they had said, We are for trial, so disbelieve, not, by learning this magic from us. Abu Jafar R. Razi said that our Rabbi Ben Anna said that, Kays Ben Abad said that Ibn Abbas said. When someone came to the angels to learn, magic, they would discourage him and say to, him, We are only a test, so do not fall into, disbelief. 282 They had knowledge of what is good and evil and, what constitutes belief or disbelief, and they thus, knew that magic is a form of disbelief. When the person who came to learn magic still, insisted on learning it, they commanded him to, go to such and such place, where if he went, Satan would meet him and teach him magic. When this man would learn magic, the light, of, faith, would depart him, and he would see it, shining, and flying away, in the sky. He would, then proclaim, O my sorrow! Woe unto me! What should I do? al Hassan al-Basri said that this, I am means. The angels were sent with magic, so that the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed would be tried and tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them promise that they would not teach anyone until first proclaiming, We are a test for you, do not fall into disbelief. It was reported by Ibn Abi Hadim. Also, Qatada said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took their covenant to not teach anyone magic until they said, We are a test. Therefore, do not fall in disbelief. Also, as Sadi said, When a man would come to the two angels they would advise him, Do not fall into disbelief. We are a test. When the man would ignore their advice, they, would say, go to that pile of ashes and urinate, on it. When he would urinate on the ashes, a light, meaning the light of faith, would depart from him, and would shine until it entered heaven. Then, something like that appeared to be smoke. 283 would descend and enter his ears and the rest of, his body, and this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger. When he told, the angels what happened, they would teach him, magic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. But neither of these two, angels, taught anyone, such things, till they had said, we are for trial, so disbelieve not, by learning, this magic from us. Sunaid said that Hajjai said that Ibn Juraj commented, on this ayah, 2102. No one dares practice magic except a, disbeliever. As for the fitna, it involves trials, and freedom of choice. The scholars who stated that learning magic is disbelief, relied on this ayah for evidence. They also mentioned, the hadith that Abu Bakr al Bazar recorded from, Abdullah, which states, Whoever came to a soothsayer or a sorcerer and believed in what he said will have disbelieved in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Muhammad. This hadith has an authentic chain of narration and there are other hadiths which support it. Causing a separation between the spouses is one of the effects of magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And from these angels, people learn that by which they cause separation between man and his wife. 284 This means the people learned magic from Herod and Merit and indulged in evil acts that included separating spouses, even though spouses are close to and intimately associate with each other. This is the devil's work. Muslim recorded that Jabir bin Abdullah said that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Satan erects his throne on water and sends his emissaries among the people. The closest person to him is the person who causes the most fitna. One of them, a devil, would come to him and would say, I kept inciting so and so until he said such and such words. Iblis says, No, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have not done much. Another devil would come to him and would say, I kept inciting so and so, until I separated between him and his wife. Satan would draw him closer and embrace him, saying, Yes, you did well. Separation between a man and his wife occurs here, because each spouse imagines that the other spouse is ugly or ill mannered, etc. 285 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's appointed term supersedes everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, But they could not thus harm anyone except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's leave. Sufayan Athari commented, except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's appointed term. Further, al Hassan al-Basri said that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows magicians to adversely affect whomever he wills and saves whomever he wills from them. 
Sorcerers never bring harm to anyone, except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's leave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. And they learn that which harms them and profits them, not. Means, it harms their religion and does not have, a benefit compared to its harm. And indeed they knew that the buyers of it, magic, would have no, kalak, share in the hereafter. Meaning, the Jews who preferred magic over, following the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that those, who commit the same error shall have no kalak, in the hereafter. Ibn Abbas, Mujahid and As-Sadi stated that. No, kalak means, no share. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said. 286. And how bad indeed was that for which they sold their, own selves, if they but knew. And if they had believed, and guarded themselves from evil and kept their duty to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, far better would have been the reward from their, Lord, if they but knew. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, and how bad, meaning, what they preferred, magic, instead of faith and, following the messenger, if they but comprehend, the advice. And if they had believed and guarded themselves, from evil and kept their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, far better, would have been the reward from their Lord. Meaning, had they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, his messenger and avoided the, prohibitions, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward for these, good deeds would have been better for, them than what they chose and preferred, for themselves. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, But those who had been given, religious, knowledge said, Woe to you! The reward, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the hereafter, is better for, those who believe and do righteous good, deeds, and this none shall attain except, as Sabirin, the patient in following the, truth. 2880. 287. 2104 O you who believe. Say not, to the, messenger, Ra in the but say in Zerna, make us, understand, and hear. And for the disbelievers there is a painful torment. 2105 Neither those who disbelieve among the, people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, nor, all mushrikin, the idolaters, like that there should, be sent down unto you any good from your Lord. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for his mercy whom he wills. And, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of great bounty. Manners and speech. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, say not, to the messenger, Ra inna, but say in Zerna, make us understand, and hear. And, for the disbelievers there is a painful torment. 2104. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade his believing servants from imitating the, behavior and deeds of the disbelievers. The Jews used to, use devious words that hide what they really meant. May, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's curse be upon them. 288 When they wanted to say, hear us, they would use the, word Ra inna, which is an insult, in Hebrew, but means, hear us in Arabic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, among those who are Jews, there are some who, displace words from, their, right places and say, We hear your word, O Muhammad, and, disobey, and hear and let you, O Muhammad, hear nothing. And, Ra inna with a twist of their tongues and as a, mockery of the religion, Islam. And if only they, had said, We hear and obey, and do make us, understand, it would have been better for them, and more proper. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed them for their, disbelief, so they believe not except a few. 446. Also, the Hadith stated that, when they would read Muslims, they would say, as Samu alaykum, meaning, death be to, you. This is why we were commanded to answer, them by saying, wa alaykum, meaning, and, to you too, then our supplication against them, shall be answered, rather than theirs against us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the believers from imitating the, disbelievers in tongue or deed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O you who believe, say not, to the messenger, Ra in the but say in Zerna, make us understand. 289 in here. And for the disbelievers there is a, painful torment. Also, Imam Ahmad narrated that Ibn Umar said that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I was sent with a sword just before the last hour, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped alone without partners. My sustenance was provided for me, from under the shadow of my spear. Those who, oppose my command were humiliated and made, inferior, and whoever imitates a people, he's one, of them. Abu Dawud narrated that the Prophet said, 290. Whoever imitates a people is one of them. These, hadiths indicate, along with their threats and, warnings, that we are not allowed to imitate the, disbelievers in their statements, deeds, clothes, feasts, acts of worship, etc., whatever actions of the, disbelievers that were not legislated for us. ad oh. said that Ibn Abbas commented on the, ayah, say not, to the messenger, Ra Inna. They used to say to the prophet, Ar Inna Samak, which is an insult. Ibn Abu Hadam said that it was reported that Abu, Al Alia, Abu Malik, Ar Rabi Ben Anas, Ati Al, Afi and Qatada said similarly. Further, Mujahid said, do not say, Ra in the means, do not dispute. Mujahid said in another narration. Do not say, we hear from you, and you hear, from us. Also, Ada said. Do not say, Ra in the, which was a dialect, that the, answer used and which was forbidden, from use by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, as Sadi said, Rifa bin Zaid, a Jewish man from the tribe of, Kanuka, used to come to the Prophet and say to, him, here, Ger Musmin, let you hear, nothing. The Muslims used to think that the prophets are greeted and honored with this type of speech, and this is why some of them used to say, here, let you hear nothing, and so on, as mentioned in, Surah, and Isa. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the believers from, uttering the word Ra in the Abdurrahman bin Zaid bin Aslam also said, similarly, the extreme enmity that the disbelievers and the people of, the book have against Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said next, 
neither those who disbelieve among the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, nor all mushrikan, the idolaters, like that there should be set down unto you any good from your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the deep enmity that the disbelieving polytheists and people of the 291 scripture, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned against imitating, have against the believers, so that Muslims should sever all friendship with them. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned what he granted the believers of the perfect law that he legislated for their prophet, Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for his mercy whom he wills. And, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of great bounty. 2105 2106 Whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak, we abrogate, or nunsiha, cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Know you not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. 2107 Know you not that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. And besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have neither any wali, protector or guardian, nor any helper. The meaning of N-A-S-K-H. Ayah says. 292 Whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak, we, abrogate, or nunsiha, cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Ibn Abi Talib said that Ibn Abbas said that whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak, means whatever an isle we abrogate. Also, Ibn Juraj said that Mujahid said that whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak, means whatever an isle we raise. Also, Ibn Abi Naji said that Mujahid said that whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak, means we keep the words, but change the meaning. He related these words to the companions of Abdullah bin Masud. Ibn Abi Hadam said that similar statements were mentioned by Abu al Aliya and Muhammad bin Qab al Qurazi. Also, a study said that whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak, means we erase it. Further, Ibn Abi Hadam said that it means erase and raise it, such as erasing the following wordings from the Quran the married adulterer and the married adulteress, stone them to death, and if the son of Adam had two valleys of gold, he would seek a third. Ibn Jrir stated that whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak, means Whatever ruling we repeal in an ayah by making the allowed unlawful and the unlawful allowed. 293 The Nasaik only occurs with commandments, prohibitions, permissions, and so forth. As for stories, they do not undergo Nasaik. The word Nasaik literally means to copy a book. The meaning of Nasaik in the case of commandments is removing the commandment and replacing it by another. And whether the Nasaik involves the wordings, the ruling or both, it is still called Nasaik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said next. Or, Nunsiha, cause it to be forgotten. 294 Ali bin Abi Talib said that Ibn Abbas said that whatever a verse, revelation, do nansak or nunsiha, means whatever I we repeal or uphold without change. Also, Mujahid said that the companions of Ibn Masud, who read this word nansaha, said that it means we uphold its wording and change its ruling. Further, Ubaid bin Amir, Mujahid and Ada said, nansaha means we delay it, that is, do not abrogate it. Further, Atiyah al Afi said that the ayah means we delay repealing it. This is the same tafsir provided by Asadi and R. Rabi bin Anas. Abdur Razak said that Mamar said that Qibtada said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, whatever a verse, revelation, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his prophet forget what he willed, and he abrogated what he will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 295. We bring a better one or similar to it. Better, relates to the benefit provided for the one, it addresses. As reported from Ali bin Abi Talib ibn Abbas, said, we bring a better one, means. We bring forth a more beneficial ruling, that is, also easier for you. Also, as Sadi said that, we bring a, better one or similar to it, means. We bring forth a better ayah, or similar to that, which was repealed. Qatada also said that, we bring a, better one or similar to it, means. We replace it by an ayah more facilitating, permitting, commanding, or prohibiting. Naskh occurs even though the Jews deny it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Know you not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. Know you not that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to whom belongs the, dominion of the heavens and the earth. And besides, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have neither any wali, protector or guardian, nor any helper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed his servants to the fact that he alone is the owner of his creatures and that he does with them as he wills. Indeed, his is the supreme authority and all creation is his, and just as he created them as he wills, he brings happiness to whom he wills, misery to whom he wills, health to whom he wills and ailment to whom he wills. He also brings success to whom he wills and failure to whom he wills. He judges between his servants as he wills, allows what he wills and disallows what he wills. He decides what he wills, there is no opponent for his judgment, and no one can question him about what he does, while they shall be questioned. He tests his servants and their obedience to his messengers by the NASKH. He commands a matter, containing a benefit which he knows of, and then he out of his wisdom, prohibits it. Hence, perfect obedience is realized by adhering to his commands, following his messengers, believing in whatever they convey, implementing their commands and avoiding what they prohibit. The statements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here contain tremendous benefit, prove that the Jews are disbelievers and refute their claim that NASKH does not occur. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse the Jews. In ignorance and arrogance they claim that the sound mind stipulates that NASKH does not occur. 
Some of them falsely claim that there are divine texts that dismiss the possibility that any SKH occurred. Imam Abu Jafar ben Jirir said, The, ayah means, do you not know, O oh, Muhammad, that I alone own the heavens and the earth and that I decide whatever I will in, them I forbid whatever I will, change and repeal, whatever I will of my previous rulings, whenever I will. I also uphold whatever I will. Ibn Jirir then said, 296 Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed his statement indicating his greatness towards his prophet, he also rejected the lies of the Jews who denied that the rulings of the Torah could undergo NASKH. The Jews also denied the prophethood of Jesus and Muhammad because of their dislike for what they brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as changing some rulings of the Torah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thus proclaimed to the Jews that he owns the heavens and earth and also all authority in them. Further, the subjects in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kingdom are his creation, and they are required to hear and obey his commands and prohibitions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full authority to command the creation as he wills, forbidding them from what he wills, abrogate what he wills, uphold what he wills, and decide whatever commandments and prohibitions he wills. I, Ibn Qasir, say that. The Jews' dismissal of the occurrence of the NASKH is only a case of their disbelief and rebellion. The sound mind does not deny that there could be a NASKH in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments, for he decides what he wills, just as he does what he wills. Further, NASKH occurred in previous books and law. For instance, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Adam to marry his daughters to his sons and then later forbade this practice. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also allowed not to eat from all kinds of animals after they left the ark, then prohibited eating some types of foods. O further, marrying two sisters to one man was allowed for Israel and his children, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited this practice later in the Torah. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Abraham to slaughter his son, then repealed that command before it was implemented. 297. O also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the children of Israel to kill those who worship the calf and then repealed that command so that the children of Israel were not all exterminated. There are many other instances that the Jews admit have occurred, yet they ignore them. Also, it is a well-known fact that their books foretold about Muhammad and contain the command to follow him. These texts, in their books, indicate that the Jews were required to follow the Prophet Muhammad and that no good deed would be accepted from them unless it conformed to Muhammad's law. The Prophet brought another book, the Quran, which is the last revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 2108 Or do you want to ask your messenger, Muhammad, as Musa, Moses, was asked before, that show us openly our Lord. And he who changes, faith for disbelief, verily, he has gone astray from, the right way. The Prohibition of Unnecessary Questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Or do you want to ask your messenger, Muhammad, as Musa, Moses, was asked before, that show us openly our, Lord. And he who changes faith for disbelief, verily, he has gone astray from the right way. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the believers from asking the Prophet numerous questions about matters that did not occur yet. 298 Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O you who believe, ask not about things which, if made plain to you, may cause you trouble. But if you ask about them while the Quran is being revealed, they will be made plain to you. 5101. This ayah means, if you ask about a matter after it is revealed, it shall be duly explained to you. Therefore, do not ask about matters that have not occurred yet, for they might become prohibited due to your questions. This is why the Sahih narrated, The greatest criminal among the Muslims is the one who asks if a thing is prohibited, which is not prohibited, and it becomes prohibited because of his asking about it. This is why when the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was asked about a husband who finds another man with his wife, if he exposes the adultery, he will be exposing a major incident. If he is quiet about it, he will be quiet about a major matter. The Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like such questions. Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ruling of Mula Anna, referred to 24-6-9 in the Quran. The two Sahis recorded that al Mura bin Shubah said that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade saying, it was, said and he said, and wasting money and asking many questions. 299 Muslim recorded that the Prophet said, leave me as I leave you. Those before you were only destroyed because of their excessive questioning and disputing with their prophets. Therefore, when I command you with a matter, adhere to it as much as you can, and when I forbid from something, avoid it. The Prophet only said this after he told the companions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them to perform Hajj. A man asked, every year, O oh, Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet did not answer him, but he repeated his question three times. Then the Prophet said, No. Had I said yes, it would have been ordained, and you would not have been able to implement it. This is why Anas ben Malik said, We were forbidden from asking the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about things. So we were delighted when a Bedouin man would come and ask him while we listened. Muhammad bin Ishaq said that Muhammad bin Abi, Muhammad told him that Ikrima or Syed said that Ibn Abbas said that Rafi bin Huramila or Wahb bin Zaid said, O Muhammad, bring us a book sent down from heaven in which we could read and make some rivers flow for us, then we will follow you and believe in you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the answer to this challenge. 300. Or do you want to ask your messenger, Muhammad, as Musa was asked before, that is, show us openly our Lord. 
and he who changes, faith for disbelief, verily, he has gone astray from, the right way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized those who asked the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about a certain matter just for the purpose of being, difficult, just as the children of Israel asked Musa out of, stubbornness, rejection and rebellion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 301. And he who changes faith for disbelief. Meaning, whoever prefers disbelief to faith. Verily, he has gone astray from the right way. Meaning, he has strayed from the straight path, to the path of ignorance and muscadence. This is the case of those who deviated from, accepting the prophets and obeying them and, those who kept asking their prophets unnecessary, questions in defiance and disbelief, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said. Have you not seen those who have changed the, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into disbelief, by denying, Prophet Muhammad and his message of Islam, and cause their people to dwell in the house of, destruction hell, in which they will burn and what, an evil place to settle in. 1428-29 Abu al-Aliya commented. They exchanged comfort for hardship. 2109 Many of the people of the scripture, Jews, and Christians, wish that they could turn you away, as disbelievers after you have believed, out of envy, from their own selves, even after the truth, that, Muhammad is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, has become, manifest unto them. But forgive and overlook, till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his, command. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. 2110 And perform the salah and give the zakah, and whatever of good you send forth for yourselves, before you, you shall find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Certainly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a seer of what you do. The prohibition of following the ways of the people of the book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Many of the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, wish that they could turn you away as disbelievers after you have believed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned his believing servants against following the ways of the people of book, who publicly and secretly, 300 to harbor enmity and hatred for the believers, and who envy the believers, while they recognize the virtue of the believers and their prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commanded his believing servants to forgive them and to be patient with them, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivers his aid and victory to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers to perform the prayer perfectly, to pay the zakah and he encouraged them to preserve the practice of these righteous deeds. Ibn Abi Hadam recorded that Abdullah bin Ka'b bin Malik said that Ka'b bin al-Ashraf, who was a Jew and a poet, used to criticize the Prophet in his poems. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, many of the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, wish that they could turn you away regarding his matter. Also, ad said that Ibn Abbas said, An unlettered messenger came to the people of the scriptures confirming what they have in their own books about the messengers and the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also believes in all of this, just as they believe in it. Yet, they rejected the Prophet out of disbelief, envy and transgression. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Out of envy from their own selves, even after the truth that Muhammad is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, has become manifest unto them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that after he illuminated the truth for them, such that they were not ignorant of any of it, yet their envy made them deny the Prophet. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized, chastised and denounced them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated the characteristics that his Prophet and the believers should adhere to, belief, faith and 303 accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them and to those before them out of his generosity and tremendous kindness. R. Rabbi ben Anna said that, from their own selves, means of their making. Also, Abu al-Aliya said that, even, after the truth, that Muhammad is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, has become manifest unto them, means. After it became clear that Muhammad is the, messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom they find written of in, the Torah and the, Injil. They deny them in, disbelief and transgression because he was not, one of them. Qatada and Arabi ibn Anas said similarly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. But forgive and overlook, till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his command. This is similar to his saying. And you shall certainly hear much that will grieve you from those who received the scripture before, you, Jews and Christians, and from those who ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. 186. Ali bin Abi Talib said that Ibn Abbas said that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. But forgive and overlook, till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his command. Was abrogated by the ayah. Then kill the mushrikin, wherever you find them. 9 5, and 304. Fight against those who believe not in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor, in the last day, 929, until, and, feel themselves subdued, 929. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pardon for the disbelievers was repealed. Abu al-Aliya, R. Rabi ben Anas, Qatada and Is, Sadi said similarly. It was abrogated by the ayah of the sword, mentioned above. The ayah, tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his command. Gives further, support for this view. Ibn Abi Hadam recorded Yusama bin Zaid saying that. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his companions used to forgive the disbelievers and the people of the book, just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded in a statement. But forgive and overlook, till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his command. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to forgive them and was patient with them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed fighting them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed those who he decreed to be killed among the strong men of Quraysh by the Prophet's forces. 
The chain of narration for this text is Sahih, but I did not see its wordings in the six collections of Hadiths, although the basis of it is in the two Sahihs narrated from Usama bin Zaid. The encouragement to perform good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 305 and perform the Salah and give the Zakah, and whatever of good you sent forth for yourselves before you, you shall find it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encouraged the believers to busy themselves in performing deeds that would bring them benefit and reward on the day of resurrection, such as prayer and paying zakah. This way, they will gain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid in this life and on a day when the witnesses testify, the day when their excuses will be of no profit to the zalimin, wrongdoers. Theirs will be the curse, and theirs will be the evil abode that is painful torment in hellfire. 4052. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Certainly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what you do meaning that he is never unaware of the deeds of any person, nor will these deeds be lost by him. Whether deeds are righteous or evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will award each according to what he or she deserves based on their deeds. 2111 And they say, none shall enter paradise, unless he be a Jew or a Christian. These are their own desires. 306 Say, O Muhammad, produce your burden if you are truthful. 2112 Yes. But whoever submits his face, himself, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is, follows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion of Islamic, monotheism, and he is a Muslim then his reward is, with his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on such shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. 2.113 The Jews said that the Christians follow, nothing, that is are not on the right religion. And the, Christians said that the Jews follow nothing, that is are, not on the right religion. Though they both recite, the scripture, like unto their word, said those, the pagans, who, know not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge between them on the day of, resurrection about that wherein they have been, differing. The hopes of the people of the book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells. 307 And they say, None shall enter paradise unless he be a Jew or a Christian. These are their own desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the confusion of the Jews and the Christians clear, since they claim that no one will enter paradise unless he is a Jew or a Christian. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned their claims in Surah al maidah 308. We are the children of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his loved ones. 518. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuted this false claim and informed them that they will be punished because of their sins. Previously we mentioned their claim that the fire would not touch them for more than a few days, after which they would be put in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebuked this claim, and he said about this baseless claim, these are their own desires. Abu al-Aliya commented, these are wishes that they wished Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer without basis. Similar was stated by Qatada and ar Rabi ben Anas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, say, meaning, say O Muhammad, produce your burhan. Abu al-Aliya, Mujahid, As-Sadi and ar Rabi ben Anas stated, meaning, your proof. Qatada said that the ayah means, bring the evidence that supports your statement. 309. If you are truthful, in your claim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, yes. But whoever submits his face, himself, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is, follows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion of Islamic monotheism, and is, a, musin. Meaning, whoever performs deeds in sincerity, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without partners. In a similar statement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so if they dispute with you, Muhammad, say, I have submitted myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Islam, and so have those who follow me. 320. Abu al-Aliya and Arabi said that. Yes. But whoever submits his face, himself, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, means whoever is sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Sayyid ben Jubair said that, yes. But whoever submits, means, he is sincere. His face, himself meaning, and his religion. And he is a Muslim, following the messenger. For there are two conditions for deeds to be accepted. The deed must be performed for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, alone and conform to the sharia. When the deed is sincere, but does not conform to the sharia, then it will not be accepted. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Whoever performs a deed that does not conform with our matter, religion, then it will be rejected. This hadith was recorded by Muslim. Therefore, the good deeds of the priests and rabbis will not be accepted, even if they are sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone, because these deeds do not conform with the method of the messenger, who is sent for all mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said regarding such cases, and we shall turn to whatever deeds they, disbelievers, polytheists, sinners, did, and we shall make such deeds as scattered floating, particles of dust. 2523. As for those who disbelieved, their deeds are like a mirage in a desert. The thirsty one thinks it to be water, until he comes up to it, he finds it to be nothing. 2439. And. 310. 311. Some faces, that day will be humiliated. Laboring, weary. They will enter in the hot blazing, fire. They will be given to drink from a boiling, spring. 88 2-5. When the deed conforms to the, shariah outwardly, but, the person did not perform it sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, the deed will also be rejected, as in the case of the, hypocrites and those who do their deeds to show off. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, the hypocrites seek to deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is he who deceives them. 
and when they stand up for a salah, the prayer, they stand with laziness to be seen by people, and they do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but little. 4142. And so woe unto those performers of salah, prayers, hypocrites. Those who delay their salah from their stated fixed times. Those who do good deeds only to be seen of men.